How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. Still working on organic. This is volume 5 and we look at reactions of alkanes. Let's go. Okay, volume 5. What are the reactions of alkanes? We look at combustion and we look at free radical substitution. The IB understandings and applications is that alkanes generally have low reactivity and undergo what we call free radical substitution. We need to be able to write equations for combustion and incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons and then we need to know the mechanism for free radical substitution which is the focus of this video. So alkanes, CnH2n plus 2, they belong to the homodular series where they're connected by only single carbon to carbon bonds. Make sure you say that. You must say single carbon to carbon bonds. They're described as unsaturated because they have the maximum number of carbon hydrogen bonds. Alkanes, they lack functional groups, so their chemistry is strictly restricted to combustion and substitution reactions. They're generally fairly unreactive. Why are they unreactive? There's two reasons. The carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds do not break easily. They have a high bond enthalpy, which means it's hard to break the bond. They also have a similar electronegativity, which means they're not an overly polar bond. So a carbon to carbon bond is a relatively strong covalent bond, and it's a non-polar covalent bond because there's no difference in electronegativity. It's a hard bond to break. The carbon to hydrogen bond is actually stronger than a carbon to carbon bond and it has a slight polarity in favour of the carbon. It's slightly more electronegative than the hydrogen. So it's known as a polar covalent bond. Alkanes, they do not react with acids, they don't react with bases and they don't react with oxidising agents. So the only thing they undergo is free radical substitution where a hydrogen is substituted for a halogen. How does that occur? Well, alkanes contain what we describe as an electron-rich site between a carbon and hydrogen covalent bond. The hydrogen has a partial positive charge because the carbon is slightly more electronegative, so it draws the electrons to itself. So that leaves that bond open for attack by what we call a free radical. Now, a substitution reaction involves substituting a hydrogen for a halogen, either a chlorine, a bromine, a fluorine, etc. And to activate this reaction, we need UV light to break apart the bond in the halogen. So if we have methane and chlorine and we mix those together with UV light, we can substitute a chlorine onto the hydrocarbon and form chloromethane. Our byproduct will be HCl because we've substituted a hydrogen for the chlorine. This is known as halogenation, and if we have chlorine, it's known as chlorination. If we have bromine, it's known as bromination. And this type of reaction takes place in three important steps called initiation, propagation, and termination, which you must know. So we describe this substitution by a sequence of steps known as a reaction mechanism. And the three parts of the mechanism are initiation, propagation, termination. Initiation begins with what we call photochemical homolytic fusion, which means we need UV light, which is the photochemical part. Homolytic means splitting into two equal things, and fusion means breaking the bond. So the initiation involves a chlorine molecule, Cl bond Cl, splitting in half, homolytic fusion by photo photochemical UV light. So that means that one electron in the bond will go to one chlorine and the other electron will go to the other chlorine, producing two chlorine radicals. Now we know that it's a radical because it has a lone electron and we represent that by a dot. So here I've got the electrons moving in the bond to both of the chlorines and then our radicals are described as having a dot, dot Cl. That is a chlorine radical. We can also write this by doing Cl2 and then an arrow with UV light because that's our catalyst for this homolytic fusion, dot 2Cl. That's the initiation step. Radicals are very reactive. 
So then the radicals can then react very quickly with methane molecules in the process forming a methyl radical and HCl. Once we form a methyl radical, the methyl radical is able to react with a chlorine molecule, which then substitutes just one chlorine onto the chain. So we have CH3Cl, and then in the process, we form another chlorine radical. So this is a chain reaction. We're getting this chain reactions of radicals being formed. Eventually, termination will occur because two radicals will collide together to form an unreactive molecule. So that could be two chlorine radicals reacting to form a, a chlorine molecule. We could have a chlorine radical and a methyl radical to make a substituted alkane. Or in the unlikely case, we could have two methyl radicals reacting to form ethane. But either way, that stops the reaction because that is an unreactive molecule. Now, it's hard to control just a single substitution. So substitutions don't stop when just one hydrogen has been replaced. They continue until all of the hydrogens have been replaced. So at some time, CH3Cl molecules will be present in significant amounts, but they will keep reacting to form di and tri and tetra substituted alkane molecules. So how do we get out the one that we want? Well, we would separate these with a process called fractional distillation, which is where we get our mixture and we heat it up to a certain temperature and then based on their physical property of boiling point, we can actually start to separate each of those individual components. So we would set up our apparatus with our mixture, we would heat it up, in this case if we wanted the chloromethane, we would heat it up to say 20 degrees and then the only thing that we would get out of that would be the chloromethane, which would be a gas. So it's not exactly the best picture, but it's there just as a demonstration. The other type of reaction that alkanes undergo is combustion reactions. Now, when alkanes undergo complete combustion, they produce carbon dioxide and water. If an alkane undergoes incomplete combustion where oxygen is limited, it will form carbon monoxide, mon meaning monobrow, one, CO, and water. To balance for any combustion reaction, we use the same CHOD. Balance for carbon, balance for hydrogen, balance for oxygen, and then D stands for double if we have an odd number of oxygens. So two examples, write a balanced chemical equation for the complete combustion of pentane. So pentane, the fifth member of the alkane series family, C5H12 plus O2 gas, goes to CO2 plus H2O. Now with states, depending upon what temperature they've said that this is occurring at, we could either have liquid water or gaseous water. If it's at standard temperature and pressure, it would be a liquid. If it's at room temperature, a liquid. If it was hotter, it would be a gas. We balance for oxygen by having five carbons. We balance for hydrogen by having six in front of the water, which gives us 16 oxygens, so we have an eight in front of our O2. Nice and simple, didn't need D for double. If we have a look at the incomplete combustion of butane, however, that forming carbon monoxide, CO gas, and H2O liquid, when we go to balance this one, we have to put a four in front of the carbon monoxide to balance for our carbons. We need to put a five in front of the water to balance for our hydrogens. But here we have a problem. Four and five is nine. We have nine oxygens on the right hand side. Nine is an odd number. It's very hard to balance for odd numbers of oxygen. So this is where we apply D for double. We put the nine in front of the oxygen and then double everything else. Works every single time. Okay, volume five, some top tips. That is a very common question for the mechanism of free radical substitution. And the question I always get asked is, do you need to know it? And the answer is yes, you do need to know it. Make sure you remember, that's the best way of doing it. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.